You would have thought this Nationals team would have taken a step back after trading away Jamie Candelario, but oh my God, we are so wrong. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on Twitter at RyanClary11 and as well as the show page at LO underscore Nationals for your latest and best Nationals content over on social media. And guys, in today's show, we'll be t- discussing Dylan Cruz's debut weekend as I got to head it down to Fredericksburg on Saturday to see that debut. While that first game wasn't all too impressive, there's some other prospects we'll have to talk about. Yo-Yo Morales, Andrew Pinckney, take a seat. You guys, my friend, are pretty legit. It's a Monday, so we have to get you up to the latest of this national stock report. Who's been hot and who's been not? I'll give you the latest on individual performances a little bit later on, but we got to start off with this Red Hot Nats team. And I came in thinking that I was going to be discussing Dylan Cruz, Andrew Pinckney, and Yo-Yo Morales and what I saw to them to lead off this Monday program. But no, no, no. When you sweep the Cincinnati Reds, your second sweep this season after not sweeping a team in the entirety of 2022, you come in and you sweep that playoff team, the Cincinnati Reds. And now while we've always kind of been saying the Reds, Are they kind of pretenders? Possibly. They really aren't as good as the record would indicate, I would say. They got hot in the month of June and July. And yes, Ellie De La Cruz is still very exciting. They have a ton of young talent on their team. They just simply don't have the pitching depth to really keep up with the better teams. But this weekend, this three-game series, the Nationals, they were the better team all around. All around this Nationals team, dominated the Cincinnati Reds from start all the way to finish. And where do you even begin? Truly, where do you begin? Because Patrick Corbin, Friday night, goes six and a third, three earned runs, and those three earned runs were three solo home runs. I will take that. Patrick Corbin did actually look pretty good, in my opinion, after getting down early. It was kind of like, oh, no, here we go again. Patrick Corbin, he stayed put. He did well and he gave this bullpen a chance to really come in the game and revive themselves, which is what they did. Saturday, Yoan Adone. If I'm being completely honest, when I was heading down to Fredericksburg, I was like, eh, I'm fine missing this game. Yoan Adone, two pitches in his arsenal, eh. He used to be a top guy in the system. That was when the system was probably last in all of baseball. Yoan Adone, what a performance. What a damn performance performance by the young kid and again he is still young he is still while he has graduated from prospect status after making about 14 starts last season and those 14 starts were not good by any stretch of the imagination he came in in a pinch filling in for Trevor Williams and now it's looking like this guy's got a shot in the big leagues for the rest of this season then yesterday Jake Irvin Probably the worst of the three starts, but even then, four and a third innings, three earned runs, six strikeouts, and two home runs given up. The starting pitching was pretty damn good for this Cincinnati Red Series, and really, it extends even further. As this last week, you faced Milwaukee Brewers at home in a three-game series. The Brewers at that time, they needed to win those games. The Nationals won two of three at home, beating the Milwaukee Brewers, and that was a huge kind of get your S together kind of series for this Nationals team. The pitching was on point. The offense was on point. And while that Milwaukee Brewers team, I also kind of think of them along the same lines as the Cincinnati Reds. While they have better pitching, in my mind, they certainly don't have the young depth that you really kind of need to take that long postseason run. These NL Central teams have kind of been pretenders from here, really, over the last month or two. But what has stuck out to me Over this last week, winning five of six against both the NL Central leading teams with the Brewers and as well as the Reds, is this bullpen. 
Since the beginning of that Brewers series, this Nationals bullpen, who has gotten a ton of work over the last week or so, they've only given up two earned runs in that stretch. In the last six games, they've given up two earned runs. That is what has stuck out to me in this national team so far. While, yes, the starting pitching has been awesome. It's been really good. You're getting quality starts from multiple different guys. Patrick Corbin stepping up. Mackenzie Gore looked really good. Josiah Gray got rocked around. But guess what? When you have others like that who can pick you up in the bullpen, if they're going to come in and look really good, then you're going to be fine. In the Nationals, that is where they have been. Because we know the main pegged on issue so far for this Nationals team in 2023. It's the bullpen. It's the inconsistency with this team. You never know what you're going to get. And while Mason Thompson right now is on the injured list while slipping and hurting his knee at what it sounds like, not the end of the world, it's fine. He's been one of our more consistent arms out of the bullpen. Carl Edwards Jr. is still not back. Andres Machado is coming in to pitch meaningful innings in yesterday's ball game. He looked good as well. Jordan Weems, through three straight days, he looked really good in all three appearances. This Nationals bullpen is starting to come together. It really is. And no, not even to mention Kyle Finnegan and what this guy has done all summer. His name will be mentioned in today's stock report, and the stats are jarring from what he has done really all summer long. This Nationals team, if they were to actually get all their ducks in a row and get the bullpen together and get the starting pitching together, where would we be right now? Where would this Nationals team be where we're only nine games back out of a wild card spot, which is insane to believe, by the way. But what this Nationals team has also done, and this kind of is putting everything together, This Nationals offense, in four of the last six games, they've scored five-plus runs. They put up a ton of runs on the board in these last six games, winning five of six, obviously. It's starting to come together. You're starting to see the vision of what Mike Rizzo in the front office and Davey Martinez, what they have for this team. Now, while it's still not filled with talent, while it's still not a team that you really want to be out there every single day. There are still holes on this team, and we can recognize that. You can spin two plates at once. But you're starting to see the vision and what this team is about, the youth, the growing pains. All of that stuff is starting to be pushed to the side because they are blossoming before our eyes. It really is. You start the game yesterday, first pitch, C.J. Abrams takes a ball 10,000 feet to right field. Lane Thomas, the very next pitch, 10,000 feet dead center field. This is the kind of production that you want to see out of your young guys. And yes, I said Lane Thomas is young because he still is. He still is a young guy in my mind, a blossoming flower before our eyes, a late bloomer, you could even say. All these pieces are starting to come together. And when we see this Nationals team and what we have done best so far through this season, this is why if you have a steady bullpen with steady pitching and an offense that just does, that does just enough, that is the production that this team could see. And by the way, you're still down Mason Thompson, Carl Edwards Jr., and multiple different injuries. You just trade away J. Mayor Candelario, who is one of the clubhouse leaders. And this team is still gelling and have found a way to win five of six against two postseason teams who need wins so desperately. Because the Cincinnati Reds have now dropped six straight games. And I think the Nationals, they have put their name to this rebuilding crappy young team to the side. And they have said, Major League Baseball, when you come to Washington, D.C. and when we come to your yard, you have to take us serious. This isn't the 2022 Nationals. This is a much different, a much more calculated approach to a baseball game. You see what this team is talking about, and you see the youth growing right before our eyes, and it is an amazing, amazing sight to see because 2023 is about the growth of these young players, and you could check all the boxes in basically every single young player's category for this national squad. 
Thank you guys for making Locked On Nats your first listen. The Nationals play the Phillies tonight at 640 Eastern time. I always hate the 640 Eastern time starts, but it's whatever. Catch every pitch of the Nationals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals there. And before I get into the National Stock Report, as it is a Monday, we have to get you up on the latest for all your Nationals individual performances and much, much more with a little bit of a breakdown between those analysis. I got to tell you guys about our friends from Dave. And guys, Dave, at one time or another, we all need a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you cash when you need a hand between paychecks and can help you build credit by settling extra crash advances on time. Dave is a banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. Extra cash gives you more money to buy groceries, fill your tank, finally get your car repaired, or catch up on bills without having to wait for your next paycheck. And that is why I tell you guys to use our friends at Dave. Download Dave today at dave.com slash MLB. That's dave.com slash MLB. You can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash MLB. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Baking service provided by Evolve. Member FDIC, go to dave.com slash MLB and get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. For terms, visit dave.com slash legal. And now we get into a national stock report as this is your latest in nationals news and notes and individual performances for this national team. We major in the young guys here, but we're going to start off with You could say a young guy, as I've said plenty of times before, Lane Thomas. Over this last six-game stretch for Lane Thomas, you saw what he's done at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. He had a three-home run game there last year, and then he followed it up with a two-home run game there over the weekend. Lane Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. Three home runs in this series, but over the last six games, he has an 800 slugging, three home runs, two doubles, and 10 RBIs in these six games. Listen, Lane Thomas has always been the big production guy in this offense. When you need to win games, and especially against better teams like the Brewers and the Reds, you need Lane Thomas to step up, and that is what he did over this last week. Lane Thomas, for all the people out there that said he is a positional, rotational kind of guy, not an everyday starter, sure, You may believe in that, and that's fine. You can talk about all the deep dive analytics. This guy hits. This guy knows how to hit, and he is a professional hitter. His batting average is up. His slugging is up. His on-base percentage is up. His strikeout rate is also up, which you would rather see a little bit down. But when you have all good numbers across the board, that's perfectly fine. I'll take that from Lane Thomas any day of the week. But again, the big number here is his slugging percentage. Having an 800 slug over the last six games, incredible to say the least. Now, while I typically go with a stock down following a stock up, not these red hot Nats, stock up for Kyle Finnegan. Kyle Finnegan has quietly had probably the best summer for this Nationals team. While you can make the case for C.J. Abrams as well. That's the flashier, sexier kind of pick that you want to talk about, in which we do basically every day on the show and just rave about how good this guy is. But Kyle Finnegan, through since the beginning of July, has a 1-1-5 ERA. Opponents are batting 160 against him, and he has only given up two earned runs and has struck out 14 batters in that time frame as well. Again, it is August 7th. Since the beginning of July, he has only given up two earned runs. And think of all the pivotal situations that Kyle Finnegan has been put in, whether it be closing games from the eighth inning on, whether it be coming in, bases loaded jam, and getting out of that jam. Kyle Finnegan has been incredible for this team, which also kind of makes me think, why didn't we move him at the deadline for now? But it's fine because this guy is playing 
very meaningful baseball for this Nationals team. He's starting to really get in the lab and get into what he does best. His fastball velo has been up recently. His fastball was hitting 99 yesterday. It was blazing. Kyle Finnegan has developed beautifully for this national squad. And you're starting to see him pitching meaningful situations and means a lot for this young national team with a young starting pitching core as well. Stock down for Ildemar Vargas. That's the only stock down I'm giving away today because that's truly what it's just been like. Since the New York Mets series, he's got a 378 on base plus slugging and he's only got four hits. He's starting to see more meaningful action. He's starting to play every day again since that Candelario trade. And it just hasn't really panned out up to this point in time for Vargas. The switch hitting bat, I've always liked the talent. I like the rotational piece that he is. But again, this is why he is not an everyday player because he gets a little bit exposed. He's not very good on the offensive side of things. Now, while I can't complain about his defense, he has had some hiccups here and there but he's still an above average defender in my mind at really any position that you put at. He's a nice utility piece, but again, when you're in the lineup every single day now, and that is kind of the expectation going forward, I need you to produce. I need you to step up to the plate and get your hacks in. Don't strike out that much and do what's best for the team, which is get on, put the ball in play, and just do your job. That is Ildemaro's job, and he just hasn't done that portion at the plate. Speaking of someone who's done their portion at the plate since being called up, second baseman, third baseman, super utility guy, whatever you want to call him, Jake Alou. Jake Alou has always kind of been on everyone's radar, and the reason why he hasn't gotten the big, sexy, top 100 prospect grades is because this guy was a late-round pick at a Boston college in 2019. Not many people were really checking Jake Alou box scores over the years, if we're just being honest. But if you look at his stats in general, this guy's hit at every destination that he's been at through the minor leagues. And now since getting called up for the second time in the big leagues for what seems to be the rest of the year, he's batting 357. He's got a 400 on base percentage and he's got an 829 OPS with five RBIs in four games, including that clutch extra innings hit in Friday night's contest. Jake Alou, this guy, what he has done over the last few games here, what he has done really over his last four games when he started to get this role, when he started to play every single day at second base or third base, whatever you want to put him at. You're starting to see why this Nationals ball club is so high on him. He's a scrappy player. He gets hits. He gets on base. And most importantly, when you're coming up with clutch hits on the road in Cincinnati for a team that desperately needed a win, and oh, by the way, it wasn't just some scrub that he got that hit off of. This is Alexis Bleepin Diaz, one of the best relief pitchers in all of baseball in 2023. Jake Alou, you got my attention. And this Nationals youth movement that we talked about in last week's show is starting to kick in and you're starting to get results. Jake Alou, wildly impressive over this nice little run for this Nationals ball club. Stock up four. I talked about him a little bit. In that first segment, Yoan Adone. And again, it's only one appearance for him. But when you throw five perfect inning games, five perfect innings rather, you're going to get my attention. And again, let me reiterate. I was driving down to Fredericksburg, listening to the ball game. And I was like, oh my God, Yoan Adone is perfect through five. Should I turn around, go back to D.C. in case he does throw a perfect game? Because if he did throw a perfect game, or even a no-hitter for the matter of fact, my butt would have to go all the way back up to Washington, D.C. from Fredericksburg and record a show while I was sitting there waiting, eating my popcorn, ready to watch Dylan Cruz and Yo-Yo Morales and Andrew Pinkney and all those young guys down there and Freddie. I was thinking of going back up because Adone was throwing a perfect game. He looked Tremendous. I watched that game again back on DVR that Saturday night when I got home. His fastball was in command. Everything about Yoan Adone's start reminded me of that one really good start he had back in 2021. Game 162 against those Red Sox. He looked amazing in that game. And you started to see that a little bit in yesterday or in Saturday's contest against those Reds. Because again, take a perfect game into the sixth inning. You deserve a stock up on any metric. I don't care what the stats say. 
if you're throwing a perfect game into the sixth inning and you're a young starting pitcher, great job. Great for you. Something is clicking and you have my attention, Yoan Adone. Let's see if it can keep on rolling the way that we want it to. The Nationals play the Phillies tonight at 640 Eastern time. You can catch every pitch of the Nationals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals there. And before we get into, oh, excuse me, talking about those Fredericksburg Nationals and what I saw this past weekend, not only did I see Dylan Cruz perform, there's a couple other names that this Nationals team will have to watch going forward. I'll get you those and really get up to date on all things Fredericksburg Nationals and this Nationals prospects list. But I got to tell you guys about our friends over at Better Help. And this show, this Washington Nationals Locked On Nationals podcast is sponsored by Better Help. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear, whether it be getting out of the funk from that pandemic back in 2020 or whatever is going on in your personal life. Therapy can help you and it helps you stay connected to what you really want while navigating life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. And that is why I want to tell you guys about our friends at BetterHelp, because if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to, to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional car, car, uh, charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnLMB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on MLB and try our friends over at BetterHelp. Now let's get back into it as the Nationals. Let's take away from the Major League Baseball field and let's look down at the farm. As I spent a nice little day trip down in Fredericksburg on Saturday to see Dylan Cruz debut. And let's just rip the Band-Aid off because I know everyone already saw it. He went 0 for 5. He went 0 for 5 in his debut. Oh, my God. Oh, no. In his first professional debut, Dylan Cruz, probably a top five prospect in all of baseball, went 0 for 5. Oh, no. What are we ever going to do? Listen, it's fine. He went up against a very good Salem Red Sox squad. While you may not hear about it, I can tell you this, that Salem Red Sox team, they have pitching for days. I haven't really heard of any of those guys over there. But a lot of those kids were young, international talents, 19, 20 years old, throwing mid to upper 90s, filthy, filthy, filthy junky, junk pitches, and really just everything about them. You kind of saw what that Red Sox team was about. But with that Fredericksburg national team, while it was Dylan Cruz's debut, while he was the highlight of the day, we all wanted to see it. His first pitch, grounded into a double play. His first pitch that he saw, and he tripped out of the box. I'm fine with that. It's whatever. It's his first professional game, if you're not counting rookie ball, where he went three for three on literally only seeing three pitches in that contest. He looked fine. It's fine. He had a home run in yesterday's game in the last little finale of that home stretch for this Fredericksburg Nationals team. He's not going to be down there for long. Even if he does struggle, he's going to get moved up eventually here, probably pretty time any time here within the next two to three weeks, I'd imagine, maybe even sooner than that. That is the kind of talent that Dylan Cruz is. And even then, he hit multiple balls really hard in that contest as well. Sunday, he did the same thing, going 416 feet with that home run. That is his lone hit on this young season. Dylan Cruz is going to be just fine. But let's also talk about some other Nationals draft, draft prospects as the player that stuck out to me the most, not Dylan Cruz, not Andrew Pinckney, Yo-Yo Morales, Yohandi Morales, the second round pick, and again, the top 20 prospect in that this past draft class in 2023 at the University of Miami, big power, solid with the glove. But I think the glove thing was a little understated. I saw Yo-Yo Morales make two really smooth plays over at third base. He made one huge play, one huge double play in a clutch situation later on in the game. While, yes, the Nationals were down 7 to nothing or whatever it was, they eventually came back, tied it in the ninth. 
lost in extra innings by giving up another grand slam, which was insane. But you saw the kind of smooth talent over at third pace because it came with ease when I saw Morales. That's what stuck out with me the most. When he played, it really just kind of showed the confidence that he has over at third base. And now while I still believe Brady House is a third baseman of the future, and you also have Trey Lipscomb, who is still just killing the baseball at double A right now, the Nationals are going to have a great problem over at third base because in my opinion, we've all kind of known Trey Lipscomb is a solid defender at third base. Brady House was a shortstop, moved over to third base. He's going to be above league average over in the defensive hot corner there. And now Yohandi Morales. It's going to be an interesting dynamic with all three of those guys and who should have similar-ish timelines getting up to the major leagues if they do develop the way that we think they do. Now, Morales, he's going to have to hit. And in my opinion, I still think he is a first baseman. But what I saw, if you can play a solid defensive third base the way that he did in Fredericksburg on Saturday and what he has been doing since his Miami days, you got something there. Not just at third, but at first base potentially because he has that huge frame. I mean, I think he's around six foot three, maybe six foot four. He looked every bit of that. And he's a big frame, big shoulders. He looks like a first baseman in my mind. That would be an awesome situation for this Nationals team. A big power bat, someone who's good with the glove, he has got a solid arm there. He just needs to develop over at first base, and I hope this Nationals team recognizes that and sees that and hopefully puts him over at first base to at least get some reps and work on that this coming offseason because it's a crowded room over at third base. You've got Brady House, a first-round pick, a big-time prospect for this Nationals team. Trey Lipscomb who has also looked really good on that hot corner. And now you have Yo-Yo Morales, who's looked really good. And then, oh, Jake Alou, who's also solid over at third base. He's been good. So you had a ton of third base talent in this young core of a group with this national squad. Andrew Pinckney as well. I do want to mention him because he's been the Fredericksburg Nationals best hitter since joining them so far. I believe he's still betting over 500. He's gotten 1,000 OPS plus. He's been amazing so far this season. And when I look at him, he's sticking in right field. He looks good. He looks really good defensively. And the confidence that he has right now up at the plate, this guy was a fourth-round pick in this year's draft. He's making his name known. He's really starting to develop. And really, this Nationals team, they got a ton of talent down in Fredericksburg. And it's exciting to see that all these guys are starting to fit and mix. Now, while I did want to gas up those Three guys, Dylan Cruz, Yo-Yo Morales, and Andrew Pinckney. I do also want to talk about another top 10 prospect with Yarlin Susanna, who started that Saturday's contest. His first two innings were immaculate. Really damn good, those first two innings. He's throwing 100, 101, 102. You're seeing the, the radar gun up on the scoreboard. It's awesome to see. And then also, his slider was incredible. Incredible. In that ball game, I didn't. I've never seen the amount of swings and misses in those first two innings off a slider than what I saw in Saturday's game. But ultimately, the wheels fell off. He lost his fastball command. He started spraying the ball all over the place. He's walking a ton of guys, and he's got serious control issues, as we've kind of known. Again, 19 years old, six foot seven, a huge body, a huge frame, and a huge lop the upside. The slider is filthy. It generates swings and misses. But now, as I kind of get more up close and personal with Susanna, and I look at it and I'm like, "Mm, is this guy a starter in the long run? I'm not too sure. But here's the good thing. If this guy is not a starter, we got ourselves a beast of a closer in the future. A monster of a closer in the future. He's going to have to work on cutting down his walkouts, his his walks, and really just everything with that has to be under control and just better overall. I'm no development guy. I don't know a thing about developing pitching, but I can tell you this, there were a lot of balls thrown after those first two innings. So I wonder if it's an inning thing with him as he gets up in the game, as his innings creep up a little bit higher, is that when he starts to lose command? Because if so, that's fine. 
because he can come out of the bullpen and give us one inning, just pumping 102, 103, and having a low 90 slider that is so filthy. I cannot say that slider. I cannot rave about that slider enough. In my opinion, it was way more impressive than his 102-mile-per-hour fastball. You guys can catch the Nationals and the Phillies tonight at 6.40 Eastern time as the Nationals' hometown broadcast is always with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals there. And thank you guys for making Locked On Nats your first listen. Tomorrow's show, we'll recap this Philadelphia Filthies series tonight. And as always, go Nats. Please beat the Phillies.